Okay, hello. Uh, so my top 10 uh, music scores of all time. I just, I really love movies and I like music. I pay a fair bit of attention, I guess, to music and movies. I think there are some awesome scores. I think it's a big part of a movie, the music, how it makes you feel. That's the, the point of movies is to really make you feel something and connect with something profound or whatever. And anyway, so I'm going to go through my top 10. I want to clarify some things first. Uh, these are not the top, my top 10 favorite music themes for movies, okay? There are a lot of movies that have a really cool theme or a really nice, nice melody. For example, um, I don't, I'm not saying these are bad. These are really good themes like Back to the Future. Um, there's going to be a lot of me humming, by the way, just so you know. Um, I just wanted to think so. And uh, you know, the DeLorean, awesome theme, but the score as a whole is not on the level that the scores that I've picked are overall, in my opinion. Another one would be I really love Inside Out, the Da 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 na 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 Um it's really nice. Uh I would say probably is a very good score. Um you know, I'm also not an expert on all of these movies. There's a lot of classic movies that I haven't seen or I don't know the score well enough. I mean I've seen a lot of older movies. Um but so for example Ben Hur I think is really gorgeous the Love theme is awesome. Ba 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 da ba da ba 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 da da ba 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 da. Like there's other counter melodies going on. It's a full orchestra. It's really nice, and it it keeps going. But I don't know much of the score other than that. I've actually been trying to listen to it to give it a chance. But uh, another one is The Godfather. It's it's not. It has a few uh, like waltzes, like da 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 na 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 da na 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 da 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 da. It's nice music, but it's not. That's not really orchestral. There are some parts where maybe the strings play, but it's really just, uh, you know, a nice waltz with a few instruments, and it works. But the movie is mostly that, and only two other pieces, like the love theme. Da na 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 na. Da 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 da. It's very nice music. Um, and then there's um da na 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 da 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 da. Really nice, but most of the parts have those three themes. Um, even another example. There's more examples coming to mind. Taxi Driver, which was the last movie that Bernard Herrmann did. His first one was Citizen Kane, and then he did lots of Hitchcock movies in the middle of his career, and then he ended with a Scorsese, you know, classic movie, Taxi Driver. It's nice music, but it's mostly one thing that repeats again and again. Um, da na da na na da na 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 da na na da 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 Something like that. It just keeps going on. It's nice, but it gets used a lot. Even another example is uh, Ennio Morricone. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Like, anyway. <laughs> um, the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, or Il Buono, Il Brutto, Il Cattivo, or whatever. Something like that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. It gets put in these top lists. I don't understand why. I should probably listen to it carefully to see how much is in it. But I swear, it's that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bah, wah, wah. That gets repeated again and again. I feel like I liked the movie. I didn't. I don't see how it's like a great film. It didn't blow me away. Um, 
And <laughs> it's this quote, like, uh, you know, there's two kinds of people in this world. Those with guns and those who dig. Start digging or whatever. Now dig. I don't get why it's such a, you know, it's not profound. It's mildly amusing. Uh, anyway, but the score is definitely not great. I, I'm spending too much time, but I wanted to clarify. These are movies that I think are on... The music is on, <laughs> I keep thinking of these phrases, running on all cylinders or whatever. You know, either it's full orchestra, it's not one main theme, it's like 10 really gorgeous, really awesome themes. Um, you know, they're just, they're really awesome, okay? Um, so yeah, just to clarify, those ones uh, have really nice music, but they're not on my list because they're just not rich enough. Uh, now I feel a bit bad, this number 10, so number 10 is kind of an exception to the rule, but I wanted to get a bit of variety. I don't, I'm worried my list is a lot of fantasy movies, a lot of fantasy action adventure, that sort of thing, because I think they tend to have the most big, exciting scores. Um, drama movies and comedies, horror movies, you generally are not going to have as interesting scores to me. It might be effective, but anyway, so my number 10, though, is a bit of an exception. Halloween, the John Carpenter film from I think 1978 it was the first slasher movie arguably the best slasher movie ever made like that type of horror movie one of the best horror movies made um, and the score is so effective but it is a bit contradictory to what I've already explained but because it's very minimal um, but I think it's quite inspired actually it was written by John Carpenter I think himself as far as I know and um, it's, yeah, really effective. It's argue, yeah, one of the best scores for a horror movie. Another one that comes to mind is Jaws with its minimal... That one's a really good one. I could have put that in my top ten. To be honest, though, <laughs> the composer of that, I didn't want too much of his because I thought you could make a top ten list with just John Williams. So I just tried to... But th that one's excellent as well. So Halloween, you've got, like... Like it's very hard to get across because it's the sound of it, the piano, just constantly going. It's good to point out, I think, as well, it came out before The Exorcist. I swear, if you can find the DVD, hang on. Uh, anyway, yeah, I just, I think, I want to point out, uh, Halloween's before, you know, Friday the 13th came out a couple years later, and it, I don't even want to see it, that movie. I've seen part of it, I couldn't finish it because it's just... Okay, yeah, so I, I tried to watch it, and it, uh, it's not that good. And then Wes Craven made, you know, uh, uh, Night on, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, or whatever. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. That just, uh, that was good, but then there's so many other crappy movies he's made, and he's called the, you know, the uh, King of Horror, or something like that. It makes no sense. John Carpenter is much more highly regarded. He made The Thing as well. Any, anyway, it's the music, though. Oh, it's just... I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. I'm just worried, that eight minutes in, and I've done, I'm not even half, halfway through one movie. But I like the piano, it really sort of seems to reflect Jamie Lee Curtis, I think her character is Laurie Strode or something. Um, her innocence and vulnerability, I'm, I'm not trying to be all fancy schmancy, it really speaks to me, the piano has this, and there's a lot of um, sort of ostinatos or just repeating patterns, um, like... <coughs> Da, na, da, na, da, na, da, na. Sort of slightly eternal, and then these bass things that are boom, 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 boom. Um, there's sort of connections between some of the different themes. Da, na, boom, boom, da, na, boom, boom. So you're not so much getting these gorgeous melodies you're getting something very minimal but every note is so effective I think it's one of the most effective scores ever written for a movie Halloween is one of the best suspense movies ever made where it's actually you know sort of nothing happening but constantly building up to like something's gonna happen constantly suggesting things in a really effective way and then it delivers the climax is so effective um, so anyway I think it's one of the best scores of all time obviously um, and yeah, the main thing is also interesting because it's got a 5-4 temp, uh, tempo time signature. 5-4, meaning 5 beats to each bar. And 
um, and it sort of keeps changing key or moving around um, but you know just this high-pitched piano thing um, just works really well and because it's five most music is four I'd say it's a bit like Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen roughly 20% oxygen I feel like music is similar I just came up with this like a couple of days ago I thought of it let's say maybe 80% is four four and 20% is like three four like a waltz like the a couple of the godfather ones um, but then very few ones like there's a tiny bit of argon or carbon dioxide in the air or even water that's like the five four or the seven eight other fancy signatures anyway all right let's move on number nine uh, this movie is kind of a one-hit wonder, um, in my opinion. It came out in 2001. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal in it. It's got a bunny. So, um, Donnie Darko. I was trying to pick a variety of movies, and I listened, re-listened to some parts of this. I really like, uh, again, it's kind of minimal. Lots of piano music. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, I don't know if I'm singing it very well. Really interesting atmospheric sort of stuff. And it's got a variety. This is what I'm trying to pick. Things that, like if Halloween only had that main theme, I wouldn't pick it. But it's got that and some other sort of various things that I think work really well. And even some other things like... That create this tension and... Uh, you know, when something scary happens, a brrrr, even if it seems a bit obvious, it just works so well. Um, and yeah, Donnie Darko has so many separate, beautiful little piano pieces that, um, whatever. It's also got a nice soundtrack. A lot of the songs I hadn't heard before, and I thought, these are really cool songs you know I, I got I didn't realize they all existed they were songs from the 80s I thought they were new songs I guess people who grew up in the 80s might have recognized several of them but pretty much all of them were new to me and I think that's really cool to pick songs from a certain time that had a similar feel that fits in with the movie I don't really think it's significant that the movie set in the 80s that doesn't matter it's any movie just can have a place that it's set in but it's just got to have a tone a, a mood and it's got to be consistent and those songs work really well um, I'm not including that technically as a soundtrack but I just thought I'd mention that and I think Gary Jules's cover of Mad World is nice I used to hate the original I think I like the original now though just got to be patient um, anyway um, and just to comment on the movie it's very weird but I think it's pretty unique and it's it's about it's, it reminds me of David Lynch where Movies can be weird. They don't have to make perfect sense. Life doesn't always make perfect sense. Um, and it's about the effect it has on you psychologically. You know, it gets you thinking and feeling weird things. And being confused can be good. And I think... Anyway, there's also this really cool... Boom, 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 boom this weird sort of beat thing anyway i think the music does what it needs to create the mood it's kind of unique it's just really sort of nice small pieces but they're they're really nice piano a bit of voices a bit of other eerie sort of stuff but uh yeah i really like it so that's number nine number eight uh i was gonna get to this eventually uh star wars episode one the phantom menace I don't care what you think of the movie. I don't think if you hate Jar Jar Binks. Oh, you, um, <laughs> why do I need, I don't even need to say anything. People can have mixed feelings about the movie, but the score is excellent. And in fact, every, all six Star Wars movies, not including the, the new one that I don't like that much, have amazing scores. Like, they're incredible. So, let's, I mean, this is, you could pick almost any John Williams movie, but I tried not to have too many, and I'm worried I haven't, picked enough variety but whatever this is one of the ones I picked so we've got um of course it borrows a lot of the themes from Star Wars but there's not actually not that much like it's mainly the main theme and the force theme that's pretty much it that I can think of I don't think Leia's theme would appear 
or any of the other themes really from 4, 5 or 6. They're not relevant in episode 1. It's got a lot of original stuff. So we've got... Um, da 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 you know, it just builds up, it's epic, and there's so many sections to it, um, you know, they sing in Sanskrit, which is interesting, uh, it's just, it's full on, and it's epic, and we Again, like, I don't care if you like Darth Maul or not, or how you think it, you know, the prequels compare to the original trilogy, it doesn't matter, that music is amazing, even just to listen to, and just all the details, the way it climaxes, and the subtle changes in harmonies, it's firing, like I said, firing on all cylinders, it's incredible. Um, you've also got, uh, let me just think, you've also got the funeral march, the da, 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 da. singing there's quite a lot of choral music there's a lot there's a, some nice music for the Gungan underworld city that's choral there's um Anakin theme da, na, 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 na. Da, na, 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 na. out by the way the force awakens doesn't have those themes like there's so many themes within episode one there's the droid army a lot of these things i think people don't notice because they're like well I like the music from good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't care what you say. That's because it repeats and you hear it a million times, so of course you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Whereas these themes, there's like six or seven big separate themes that get used throughout episode one and a lot of individual music for action scenes and things that are happening. You know, if you watch the pod race without music, it's not going to be nearly as exciting. Um, but it doesn't have just some stupid thing that you just keep playing. Da, na, 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 na. Godfather is a great movie, and same with part two, but it's great because of the acting and because of the directing. And the music is nice, but it is kind of generic. You could take another waltz, a nice waltz. I know people are like, what are you talking about? I love that theme. It's so beautiful. I just think, you know, whereas Star Wars, you've got... Anyway, so anyway, episode one is that good. Uh, it, I could be, put it even higher. Seriously, you could pick, pick any of the six Star Wars movies, almost any John Williams movie. I want to acknowledge there's some that... Uh, I'll, I'll do that later. Okay, let's move on. Uh, number seven. Okay, this one kind of represents a whole group. It is the first of its kind. The first animated film ever made, full length. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Um, it's kind of a musical, but I think that's okay because it wasn't a musical before the movie that I know of. I hope not. I forget who the guy was that did the music, so I feel bad that I just... I forget his name, so it's like, oh, whatever, who cares? But the songs are great. I really like them. Um, like, someday my prince will come. Someday we'll find true love. Da, 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 it's also not obvious that they made a musical. It's, a, I think, a really cool idea to take an animated film and then put it, have lots of songs, have the characters sing what they're feeling. And I also think Disney keeps getting, you know, shoved down as like it's kids' movies, you know, they're cute. They are some of the greatest films ever made, in particular those early ones, Snow White, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Fantasia, Bambi, later some, uh, you know, I think Peter Pan is awesome and... Back is Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, 
they all of them at least have like a really nice main theme. Um, hang on. Um, a dream is a wish your heart makes. That when you're fast asleep, da na 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 na. The Cinderella, and then you know. Um, anyway, they all have awesome music. You just got to trust me. A lot of, quite a few of them won the Oscar for both best score and best song. Like Pinocchio, for example. Um, when you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. When you wish upon... Oh, whatever. I like singing. I'd like to be good. I don't have any illusions, but I hate when people are like, just stop singing. You suck. You suck. No, let people try and try their best. That's how you improve. Anyway, um, and then of course there's like Little Mermaid, uh, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, which are like also, whatever you call it, second golden age of Disney. Great movies. Um, not just for the whole family, okay? For kids, for adults, they have really good themes. Just because they don't swear and hold guns sideways and shoot and talk about you know, a burger. I don't mind, I like Pulp Fiction, but that, you know, just, it's like a glass, right? Kids hold a plastic cup, and adults will never hold a plastic cup, because, you know, I hold a glass, that way if it hits the ground, it smashes. It's like, we have to think, you know, to be an adult, it has to be dangerous, it has to be bad and offensive, and, like, not okay for children, but that's not true. A, a great movie can be appropriate for everyone, just because it's appropriate for kids and they can enjoy it doesn't mean just a kid's movie. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So I partially picked Snow White because it represents, I guess, all of Disney, but it, on its own, and a lot of these Disney movies, you pick it, you listen, I listened to different tracks, and I was reminded of how good it is. Like, there's hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. It's like, it's very catchy, but very nice, you know, with, you know, really nice uh, melodies in the background. Um, and then there's like, just whistle while you work. I also don't think a lot of the artistry is appreciated is as appreciated as it should be. You know, just the artist, just even just drawing the characters and that smooth animation and the slapstick comedy is hilarious. I think it's some of the funniest stuff ever made in terms of funniest movies ever made I would feel like it was stupid if you didn't pick some Disney movies because they are hilarious the timing and the exaggerated uh, reaction to some of the things that happen I love Dopey in you know when there's a fly and you're trying to get it and, it's, and there's a part where they're climbing upstairs and the turtle's going super slow it finally gets to the top and then everyone <laughs> rushes down and it just gets knocked down it's hilarious and executed so well um um, there's another one where she sings to a wishing well. I'm wishing, I'm wishing for the one I love to find me, to find me today. today. Da, 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 da. It keeps going and then there's, you know, whatever, <laughs> with nice singing. And then the prince comes along. Um, one song, I have but one song, one song, da 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 da. I don't, I'm very bad, bad with lyrics, but I was reminded of how many really gorgeous melodies and nice music there is, and not just in Snow White, but in like a lot of the other ones I named. And again, it's not just a main song, like say Titanic, which I think probably has a good score overall, but it's just the main song is what's famous. You're here. There's nothing I fear. Um, you know, it's nice, but that doesn't make a score. That's a song. And then there's the score. is all right. I, I'm not a huge James Horner fan. I feel he rips himself off a bit. So anyway. Okay, last thing with Snow White. Apparently, Sergei Eisenstein. I don't know. I'm t trying to say it properly. But Sergei Eisenstein from Russia. Great early Russian film director, he said Snow White was his, like, favorite film of all time. I think it's a true thing. I, it could be an, an anecdote that's apocryphal, not true, I don't know, but I'm assuming, I think, <laughs> I should really double check, but I think it's true. Just thought I'd mention that. Animated films should be respected. They're ex really excellent. In fact, there's some other cool 
background effects with um you know they did really detailed backgrounds and then they move at a certain speed and other parts move at different speeds um in snow white anyway awesome movie awesome score one of the best ever um okay number six again trying to get a bit of variety amelie okay french movie 2001 is a jean-pierre jeunet or something uh i forget the guy's name Yep, I found it. So, Jean-Pierre Jeunet. I think that's how it would be pronounced. They're not going to pronounce the T on the end, I don't think, in France. Um, <laughs> I'm partially laughing. I was reminded recently, I heard someone on the news or something, say they said the Tour de France. And it just, it sounds hilarious. Because it's like, with a lot of these things, we try to sort of make them sound French. Like, uh... Uh, a classic example is Les Miserables, which a lot of people will say Les Miserables or Les Mis. It's Les Miserables. Like, you either go full French or half, like, it's kind of weird. It's just halfway and then Tour de France. <laughs> they would say Tour de France, you know, but Tour de France. <laughs> Sounds funny. All right, anyway, I think it's a really cool movie. Very uh, quirky. Uh, I really liked it at the time. Kind of unique and... um. Uh, what's the word, effervescent or just sprightly, you know, she's like a magical little pixie or something, it's just um, the inner workings of someone's mind who's just free and just imagines silly things and it's fun. Anyway, the music is really gorgeous, mostly piano music, um, some other stuff with like a, an accordion and bands and stuff um, or something, it sounds like a few instruments, but you've got... Um, da like really nice uh pieces that sort of a lot of them start slow the chords are relatively simple but they're nice they're well chosen it's not just generic um and then the piece really goes on and it's it's arguably really beautiful the thing is the movie has about 20 of them different ones again maybe some stylistic similarities they, it's not surprising that they're all from the same movie um the same sort of universe but they're gorgeous um trying to think um some other ones da 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 na da 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 na da da na da 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 na da da na uh, and I think it's also nice that they, you know, a lot of movie themes is just a melody and that's it. Okay, this is like it starts with a basic melody and then it builds and builds and you've got these different running patterns. It's excellent if you try to learn music, if you're at that level for piano. They're not that easy, but they're not that hard. Um, and they've got some interesting patterns that are quite tricky to play. I'm, <laughs> I don't think I'm even that good at them myself practice but um they build up and they you know and then they sort of pull back at the end as well and it's like just the theme sounds even nicer after that um so yeah it's excellent uh really gorgeous just yeah 20 different melodies so you take a movie where you really like oh that main melody is so nice 20 of that okay for amelie so it's deserving what number is that number six okay all right let's keep going number five Non, regret rien. Non, je ne regret rien. Da, da, da. I'm singing that song because it relates to this movie. Bum, 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 bum. It's the movie Inception from 2010, directed by Christopher Nolan, the master himself, the greatest director all time with leo dicaprio in it and all these other people um awesome movie just really uh creative anyway the score is uh epic famously epic and full-on but just yeah really really cool i i feel like it's actually stretching the idea i mean the movie stretches ideas of like what a movie can be about and how many levels of which the ideas are really interesting and powerful and thought-provoking, and I think the music does that as well. So taking that song um, and slowing it down enough, the bum, 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 b
That's kind of used as the rhythm for the main thing. With these big boom drum things in the background and the full brass trombone, whatever. So loud. Uh, and then ba 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 It's hard to sing all of it, but it's so epic and yeah, cool. And then there's parts where it goes quiet and then comes in ba 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 ba. Um, I also really like the sort of I don't know what oh it's called old souls. Um. You know, or you're waiting for a train. Those are the two tracks that have this. The keeps going and it's it just really affects me and it's these sort of echoing string sounds you know it's it feels like a space like a uh, great thing about video games is how often you can just feel free you're in this world to explore do whatever you want and this music has this feeling of like you're in a space and all these sounds are sort of reverberating and echoing and things are coming back and um i don't know just i don't know if that makes any sense but to me, it parallels the mind where you've got your conscious, what you're thinking of, but there's things can float in, things can fade out, you can end up going other places. Um, yeah, I just think the music's really interesting. There's nothing else quite like it to me. I think it is in some ways one of a kind. I also think Hans Zimmer has, uh, he's, I think he's done, like, Lion King is really good, although that involved Elton John as well. Um, that's a really good score. Um, I think some of the ones he's done are a bit more, like, I didn't like Gladiator. He just rips off Mars, and it's just too much. It sounds like Mars, but not as good, and Mars is so awesome. The music by Gustav Holst, Mars, the bringer of war, from the Planet Suite, which is so awesome, just the whole thing. Um, but anyway, I think, you know, he worked with James Newton Howard on Batman Begins. That was really good. The Dark Knight was really good with the... For the just a single note for the Joker, and then later it goes, it's sort of building up all this tension and bonum, 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 bonum. Um, and anyway, there's lots of awesome music there. Um, but yeah, I feel like he's been when you work. Certain composers seem to go through these phases and they're kind of developing ideas. So I think there's similarities between what he's done with The Dark Knight and then Inception and The Dark Knight Rises. I really like The Dark Knight Rises as well. Um, um, ba, 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 for Bane. Again, it's a 5-4 time signature. It just makes it more interesting. Um, but I'm just saying, I think he's been doing a lot of good scores lately with those Nolan movies. And I'm a huge fan of the movies. And just, yeah, Inception score is epic. There's also the time theme, the nice, the... Uh, hang on. It's actually extremely similar to the Bane theme. It's uh, just sort of four notes repeating, and the second time, one of the notes goes a bit further. It's almost like an inversion. I might look at it closer, because I think they're very similar. But anyway, it's uh, Inception, like I said, it's not just one theme. It's like many pieces of music and a, a style of music that I just don't think exists that much. These, um, you know, Mombasa is really interesting. The Hang on. Um, the part where he's getting chased in that city, uh, Mombasa, I guess, uh, is that in India? I feel really stupid now. Um, but I can't remember how it goes. I keep thinking of The Dark Knight Rises. I really like that score as well. But anyway, Inception number five. Okay, 
Number four. <laughs> This is okay. So Batman, Danny Hoffman. I'm sorry if it's really annoying. Just whatever. This is for me. Okay. I like music. I like movies. I thought about doing this on the computer and just playing samples, but I feel like it's. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's the same. I think anyway. So, um, that score. There's just uh. Okay, it's not just in this case. It's not just a melody. It's a motif. Okay. Ba na 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 na. It gets used again and again and again. Throughout the movie, but I like yeah, just not just the same thing. Ah yeah yeah yeah, wah wah wah. <laughs> I'm just gonna use that as my go-to of the most overrated, great score of all time. I like it, but it's just the same thing again and again and again. And it's these movies, movie scores is not about oh, it's my favorite three-note song. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's about great music. Anyway, um. So it gets used a lot, and there's these key changes. I mean, classical music really uh, introduced this idea of having a tonal center. This is the tone, and then there's tension, and there's fighting between these things. And Beethoven took that even further with a sort of classical or going into romantic music. But yeah, it's like a battle between two. And I think Batman uses that a lot. That kind of tension and like the um, da, na, 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 da, da, it goes to that chord, and then da, na, and then is it going to this chord or this chord? There's all this tension. The, there's a the, and again, it's not just that theme, which is epic, and it even gets used in Batman the Animated Series, which is one of the great TV shows of all time, arguably. Um, and I know for Superman has a gorgeous theme as well, John Williams, but. Uh, they used it for Superman Returns. I don't think that was a good idea. It was too weak, but you know that I, I just think it's highly respectful that you know that this Batman theme became so associated with Batman. It really is a theme in the sense of you could have that little ba na 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 na, and just you think of Batman. It's very effective in that way, and I'm just saying it's kind of cool that they used it for this animated series successfully and actually kind of added to it, and it worked. Um, without it feeling, but I, I just think Danny Hoffman deserves a lot of credit for that. The rhythms are awesome as well. This is this is a case where I think, uh, you know, if we just judge Batman by its title theme, it has to be one of the best title themes for a movie ever. Just that theme itself can compete with so many other things because of how much is going on and how effective it is. You know, the use of brass and the strings and just all the rhythms and the driving drums. I, I, I was reading stuff like, because I wanted to be fair with this, I looked up, you know, people were saying, oh, um, uh, Basil Polidurus, what movie, Conan the Barbarian, or has this driving, dr and I listened, it sounds so boring to me, I don't know, maybe I need to listen to it another 20 times before it becomes familiar, but not with Batman. You listen once, you're like 20 seconds in, and you're like, oh my god, this is like epic. I remember seeing it as a kid, the movie and just the opening, it's just so atmospheric, it really affects you, whether you care about music or not, it's powerful. Um, okay, but let's go on, it has other themes as well, that which, which are really gorgeous, like the love theme, which is actually very similar, this is a similar shape. Da na 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 da, da na 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 na, da na 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 na, da da da. So it's got that similar shape, and there's a Prince song. Prince did the songs for the movie, which I'm not counting, but I think <laughs> they, they might not be the greatest. I like Prince a lot, but anyway, one of the songs uses that as its uh, sort of main 
uh, or part of it, okay? I just think that's kind of cool. Um, there's um, some other really nice stuff for like to do with uh, what happened to Bruce Wayne's parents when he remembers that. Bum bum bum. Bum. Uh, da -na -wing. Uh, I can't remember quite, it's, but it. <laughs> if I looked it up, I would know. It's just I don't want to take too long. I was actually thinking of uh, the Penguin theme from Batman Returns. I think that movie is also has a really good score where Batman's theme and the Penguin and Catwoman's themes all intertwine a bit. They're all kind of similar. Like, oh, I think it's Catwoman's one I was thinking of. Da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 da 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 da. Anyway, whereas um, hang on. The penguin one goes bum 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 bum. Oh, there's uh, there's other parts. Whatever. I that one's really cool as well. Uh, but yeah, let's just say Batman. What else is there? Um, there's a part in when they're fighting in the chemical sort of factory. There's the setup. Just this pulsing rhythm, and you get a lot of those echoes. Like, um, really precise, cool brass things. I mean, John Williams does that a lot as well, but this is... I didn't want to just make it all John Williams. Danny Offman, I think, is a very good composer, and this is one of his best ones, where just that, especially the rhythms, um, you know, the piano is actually considered a percussive instrument, for example, and I think he uses a lot of percussion. It's not just melody. There's shapes and harmonies which are really strong, but so many interesting rhythms echoing and going at the same time. That's a good example where it's not just a melody, it's not just some a few nice chords, it's like the full orchestra doing, you know, this amazing thing together. Um, and there's that song, Beautiful Dreamer, da 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 da, da 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 But I think that song already existed, right? But it gets kind of incorporated into the score and it really works. Again, it wasn't a song that I knew existed at the time, I assumed it was written for Batman. Um, there's also some gorgeous music for the cathedral as they're climbing up and uh, again for the love theme between it, it's got a lot of good what I call incidental music I guess which is the music as things are happening but it's very moody and thematic okay compared to a lot of other scores are just kind of random or just like you know this is heavy action music I mean if you think of okay so this is a superhero movie right 1989 can anyone name any of the themes for any of the Avengers? There's so many movies, and there, there's no themes. I don't know any of them. I think maybe the Avengers themselves is a theme uh, that I would sort of recognize, okay? But the rest, if there is a theme, I don't recognize it. There's so much action, I don't know any of it. Granted, I've seen Batman more times, but I'm more interested in it as a movie. Even if it's flawed, it's more personal, it's... It's, I don't know, interesting. The character of Batman is so appealing. And then to have this movie that's very... I mean, Ebert said it was style of a substance. That's probably true to a lot, quite a bit of a degree. But the style is so cool. It's so... And there's... It just... Yeah, and the music is really epic. Really cool. Really effective. And it has quite a lot of variety. Even if it uses this motif again and again. And has a consistent sound. The brass is so cool at a lot of times. That's the part of the cathedral stuff. Um, there's also a really nice part, Charge of the Batmobile or something, where the Batmobile is driving. He's just sort of saved Vicky Vale and is just driving her, not saying anything, and it's... Um, I can't do it. Um, but, and it eventually it does have the bum, 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 but it's not that theme. It just that's, gets incorporated into it, and it's these people singing like. Um, um, 
Um, so anyway, I think it's something you could analyze more because there's a lot going on in that score when you've got those kinds of motifs. And a lot of, a lot of movies don't do that. They have longer themes um, or they just have very, very generic music. So to have those motifs that really mean something, this is Batman's theme. Uh, like the Batman Begins has a two-note motif. Ba, ba. Bum, bum. Um... It's sort of just alternating two chords, but ba ba, and then in the Dark Knight, it has sort of a minor version ba ba. It's still the same note, it, the motif, but the chord has changed uh, in an interesting way. It makes it darker. Um, okay, let's move on. Number three. Uh, <laughs> now these are like. I mean, all of these, I think, are really good. These these top three are, like, I think, amazing. Like, some of the greatest music ever written, like, compared to Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, whatever, Prokofiev. These are, like, right up there. So, it's another Star Wars movie, uh, Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. The music in this movie is ridiculous. I absolutely love it. Again, you have the main theme uh, of Star Wars uh, and the Force theme and Leia's theme. Um, da na na na, da na da na na, da na na na, da na da na na. And there's so many other things going on when that theme plays. There's counter melodies, there's little flute bits, little other whatever instruments going on, and it just comes together so beautifully. Everything is seemingly chosen for a very good reason, you know. Um, very effective. Anyway, that's technically from Star Wars.